Hi Noddle fans, today we're going to be looking at the Copper State 135th Romfeld Panzerwagen. This is LPJ Models. Before we get stuck in with the build, let's take a look inside the box. I bought this kit at Scale Model Royal Telford and I couldn't wait to get stuck in when I got home. The instruction booklet is a work of art, it's styled like a period handbook. It's filled to the brim with useful information, photos and line drawings to help you in your build. The construction guide is clear and well detailed, making it really easy to follow. The kit covers one vehicle with two paint schemes from its history. The transparent parts are crystal clear, which is surprising considering the two headlights are really thick. The sprues are really impressive. There's some really nice detail on this kit. The rivets and other small details are finely rendered as well. Also, it looks like there will be very little cleanup on the parts. The decals are printed by Cartograph and they look really nice. I'll only be using one of these though. So, let's get on with the build. As usual, I'm using my Ammo Extra Thin Cement. The engine block for the Romfell is just crowned with detail, so it's screamed to be put on display. The engine block and all the miscellaneous parts were primed in Mr. Color GX2 Gloss Black. This is a great base for metals. The piping was painted with Alclad Copper. This was sprayed on at about 10 psi, building up in light coats so I didn't ruin the effect. The engine block was sprayed with Alclad Aluminium. I then picked out the details on the engine with various Vallejo model colors. These were painted on with a fine 2-0 Kalinsky Sable brush. Once the engine was finished, it was time to start work on the fighting compartment. Whilst the interior detailing is good, it does leave some room for you to scratch build if you wanted to. The interior was primed with Mr. Color GX2. This was then followed up with some Alclad colours for chipping later on. I sprayed the fighting compartment with a light coat of AK Worn Effects. I used Mission Models Elfbine for the interior colour. References for this vehicle are thin on the ground, so I decided to go for a generic light interior colour. I added some dirt and grime to the interior of the vehicle with a highly transparent mix of Mission Models Black, Japanese Propeller Brown and their transparent medium. This was built up in really light coats. I got a bit trigger happy on the sides of the fighting compartment. This was toned down with a highly thinned coat of Elfbine.
You can see some of the chipping here I made with the chipping fluid. Unfortunately, the footage wasn't good enough to make the cut. I mixed up a wash and started dirtying up the fighting compartment. I added some mud and grime to the floor of the fighting compartment with De La Rani Artist oils, burnt umber, yellow ochre, French ultramarine and titanium white. This was then blended with a soft brush in a stippling motion. When stippling, you may need to go over the paint a few times until you get the effect you want. If you find an area has too much oil paint, you can gently remove the paint with thinners and blend it back in with your soft brush. To finish it off, I speckled on some Abtailung 502 engine grease oil paint. With the interior paintwork finished, it was time to seal up the fighting compartment. Don't forget to remove any excess paint from the mating surfaces that you want to glue. It seems a shame to hide the work that went on in the interior. Don't worry, I'll leave a hatch open later. Small details like drilling out the exhaust pipe can really add to the final result. After drilling, I brushed over some extra thin cement to smooth everything over. I primed the chassis with Mission Models Grey Primer this was followed with a coat of Misha Models Black. For the green on the vehicle, I used Misha Models Field Grey RLM80. It wasn't too vibrant a green, and it suited the look I wanted to go for. I used black basing again and built up a nice mottled finish. If done well, this can add a nice irregularity to your paint finish. With the chassis painted, I could then glue the engine in place. What's an engine without a little bit of grime? I used AK grease for shafts and bearings on the drivetrain. I followed this up with some Abtailung 502 engine grease. To get the handles to fit properly on the hatches, I had to remount some of the plastic. The handles were the most delicate part of this build. They needed a little bit of care when handling and gluing. The turret was assembled in segments. This worked quite nicely. I expected to need some filler on this sub-assembly. Luckily I didn't. With most of the main parts glued together, it was time to move on to paint. I started with a coat of Mission Models Grey Primer. This primer works really well built up in wet coats. As you can see, I used a piece of packing sponge to mask off the interior.
I base coated the whole upper assembly with a mix of Mission Models Black and IDF Sand Grey. I went for a slightly lighter mix this time as I didn't want too stark a black on the finished model. Also, it's quite hard to black base black, so I went for a fairly even coat. As the top of the vehicle was green, I needed to mask this off carefully. I used some fairly inexpensive 1cm hobby masking tape. As it's not something I've gone into before in one of my videos, I wanted to show you my mixing ratios for Mission Models paints. I used 25 drops of RLM 80. This was followed by three drops of thinner, straight out of the bottle. I added five drops of the polymixative to the paint. This was then mixed thoroughly with a clean brush. The ratios I used aren't a hard and fast rule, but this brought me to a consistency that I usually spray at. Removing tape can be so satisfying sometimes. At this point, I glued the upper hull to the chassis. I used Mr. Cement Deluxe, a slow drying glue to give me a bit of extra time. I carefully masked the areas for the large iron crosses with masking tape. This was then sprayed with Mission Models White Primer. This was built up carefully and randomly. I've got to get some tonal variation in there somehow. As I said earlier, I'm only going to use one decal from the decal sheet. This is because Copper State Models supply a template to make your own masks. I photocopied the sheet and some spares onto some thin card. This was then covered with Artool Ultra Mask. This is a great way of spraying your own markings, and on areas like the front grille, this is a lifesaver.
After I'd finished cutting the masks, they were put carefully in place. The iron crosses were sprayed with my earlier mix of Mission Models Black and IDF Sand Grey. Any mistakes were carefully touched up with Vallejo model colour. It's time for the only decal I used on the kit. The decal was placed on a smooth matte surface using Mr Mark Setter to help the decal adhere. When it had dried I used some Microsol to help it settle down and coated it in Alclad Aqua Gloss. When the aqua gloss had dried and there was no raised edges around the decal, I sealed it with Winsor & Newton Artist Acrylic Matte Varnish. The tyres on the Romfell, being an early armoured car, were light grey. I mixed up Mission Models, dark grey RLM 66 and Elfbine and brush painted this onto the tyres. With all the main paintwork finished, it was time to get on with some weathering. I used two stage chipping for most of the model. The first chips were painted with Vallejo Green Grey and a Kalinsky Sable 2-0 brush. The next stage of chipping was done with Vallejo German Sea Black Brown. This was carefully painted inside the green grey chips. This can give the impression of lighter scuffs and heavier chips. This is done selectively. Not every green chip has a brown chip. You want your paint chips to look random, try not to paint them too uniform.
With the chipping done, it was time to seal the model with Alclad Aquagloss and move on to oil paints. I mixed up the initial wash for the model with De La Rani Artist Oils, Burnt Umber and French Ultramarine. This was thinned with White Spirit. My homemade wash was then carefully painted around the details of the model. Don't worry if your wash doesn't go where you want it to, you can always remove it later on. I removed any excess wash I didn't want with just the capillary action of the brush. Once I was happy with the wash, the model was sealed with Windsor & Newton Artist Acrylic Matte Varnish. I find the matte varnish gives a good key for the dust and mud done with oil paints. Using the Artist Oil Paints Burnt Umber, French Ultramarine, Yellow Ochre, Sap Green and Titanium White, you can mix a variety of earth tones. I painted on a mid-tone earth colour. This was blended in with a soft brush. Lay is a key when weathering with oil paints. It's best to take your time and build up to the opacity you want, then layer it all on in one go. When I had built up a layer of earth tones I was happy with, I speckled on some Abtalung engine grease. I also speckled on some lighter and darker oil colours to simulate splashes and dried mud. I added some more variation with lighter and darker oil tones on the side of the vehicle.
Don't forget when doing this that layers and variation are key. You don't want anything to look too uniform. And always check your references as well. I used my previous mud mix on the inside of the hatches. This was to simulate the dirt and grime that were build up when crew were climbing in and out of the vehicle. I do realise now that after some advice from friends, I maybe added too much mud to the hatch interiors. The mud was followed with a liberal amount of speckling. I also added some rust using De Lorani Artist Oil Burnt Sienna. Now all the hatches were painted, it was time to glue them into place. I used Rocket Rapid Super Glue for an instant bond. The inside of the headlights were sprayed with Alclad Chrome over Mr. Color GX2. I masked the headlights with Pepio Drawing Gum a watercolour masking fluid. Remember, be careful when using tweezers, accidents happen. I painted the headlight housing and the crossbar with Mission Models Black mixed with IDF Sand Grey. With the headlights painted and the masking fluid removed, it was time to glue them on. I used Rocket Rapid Super Glue for this. With the model nearly finished, it didn't look as dirty as I wanted. I added some more dust and grime on the upper surfaces with artist oil paints. When the thinner had almost evaporated, I blended it in with a soft brush. Copper State models have touched on a subject that not many manufacturers would. It's Austro-Hungarian, it's First World War, and it's really interesting. I also think it looks a bit like a steampunk Batmobile. As ever, it's been great having you along for the video. Don't forget to like the video, and subscribe if you haven't, and also feel free to leave a comment below. I'm James Can of LPJ Models. Thanks for watching.